Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can join me right here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. on this station where I bring you, the Pennsylvania landowner, the information that you need regarding natural gas development. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania. And so everybody knows, I represent Pennsylvania landowners, Pennsylvania oil and gas right owners. I have not, do not, and absolutely will not represent gas or pipeline companies. I represent Pennsylvania landowners, grew up on, uh, well, adjacent to my grandparents' small farm in Armstrong County in western Pennsylvania, and I'm here to represent people like my parents. Uh, my father, steel worker, uh, now works and does this small farm uh, now that he's retired from the mill. My grandfather, uh, farmer, steel worker. I represent you. I don't and will not and have never but will never represent oil and gas companies. So uh, if, you're, <laughs> if you're looking for representation, if you need information, regarding offers, if you need a review and consultation, give us a call. Find out what we do. Uh, don't, be aware, don't be nervous or afraid about distance. I have clients all across Pennsylvania, represented people in many, many areas of this country and even other countries. So we can do a lot by telephone, we can do on internet, fax, and we also do, of course, in office conferences and all of those things as well. So where, wherever you are located, please do not, do not let distance deter you or prevent you from giving us a call. I really encourage you, call, learn what we do, get a feel of who we are and see if we can help you. Because I'm telling you, um, I'm proud to say, I think we've helped a lot of, lot of Pennsylvania landowners and would love love, love to hear from you before you sign something, before you sign. Too many times people will call after they've signed the documents that they're presented or after the issue has arisen. Or you know, we have cases where the company has trespassed on the property and then they don't call and it's years and years later. And by the time that you call when there is, and I'm not talking about walking, I'm talking about using their properties as staging areas and things like that without permission. And then by the time somebody calls and we get involved, the time has passed. So there are what's called the statute of limitations in bringing claims. Um, so you got to be careful of that. So don't hesitate. Learn your rights. Learn what we can do. Learn about the reviews and consultations. I say it so much because I do them all the time and they are they're just a very good service. It's really good. Now, of course, look, there's no, no hiding the ball here. I get paid to do reviews and consultations. But what I'm saying is, is that I'm very comfortable because it happens all the time where after the phone calls, the lander says, wow, hey, that was great. That's so much information. I'm so glad that I did this. So I really encourage you to find out about the review and consultation service. You know, I represent people for Pennsylvania landowners, gas right owners, for anything and all things related to natural gas development. Of course, gas lease, pipeline negotiations. Done pipeline negotiations now, I think I could safely say, with easily over 60 different companies in Pennsylvania. 60 different companies in Pennsylvania. That gives you an idea of what's out there and the experience that's out there as well. Royalty and royalty deduction issues. Claims, lawsuits against gas and pipeline companies. Unitization issues. I have a great case and had some others as well where the landowner's property was not properly unitized. So if you have those issues, again, we can start with the review and consultation, evaluate do you have a claim or not, and get an honest opinion from someone who's working for you, someone who's trying to help you, the Pennsylvania landowner, not the company. They're, my only agenda really is to help you. 
uh, represent people's surface use agreements, meter sites, compressor sites, estate planning issues related with people with natural gas or without, but generally speaking, natural gas cases. So again, any and all matters related to directly involving oil and natural gas development, give us a call, 570-307-0702. Check out the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com, and again, 570-307-0702. You're listening to Attorney Doug Clark, and this is All Things Marcellus. I'm here with you on this station every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m., and let's go dive into our topics of the day. Okay, everyone, I want to start by, oh, this is a fun one. This is a fun one. Uh, <laughs> it's a temporary workspace option agreement. Temporary workspace option agreement. Now, as I often say, you're saying here, oh boy, what's he talking about? Temporary workspace option agreement, that has nothing in the world to do with me. Well, a few things here. One is, is that someday it may, and someday you may be pre presented with something like this. But, again, as I say, these agreements serve as great examples throughout all types of development of natural gas and all the different types of agreements that landowners are presented. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is, is if you read your gas lease or you see your gas lease, you see a lot of things in there that are very company friendly. If you go and you look at a pipeline right-of-way agreement, you'll see a lot of things in there that are, again, very company friendly. So what do we want to do? We want to identify those items, and we want to do what we can to make them not so company friendly, to make them more landowner friendly. Well, what we find when we look at various types of agreements, we get educated. We learn from experience, and we learn how companies draft how they create these agreements, how they write them to their benefit. Well, again, of course they do. Of course they do. And we know that because we're smart. And we know, though, that we have to look out for that. So companies write these agreements for them, their own benefit. And as things pop up and they find weaknesses in their agreements, if there is a loophole in the agreement that benefits the landowner, the companies start changing their agreements to address and close those loopholes. So when I say about this temporary workspace option agreement, which I'm about to start going through, well, why do I say, hey, this can be relevant to everybody? Because it shows you, it demonstrates to you how companies operate and weaknesses and issues with the agreement I'm about to explain and address carry it's the same type of issues that you will find especially in pipeline right-of-way agreements surface site agreements sometimes called surface use agreements an agreement where the company is going to use your property water line agreements roadway agreements all of these subsequent development agreements. And what do I mean there? You sign a gas lease. Now you sit around for a while. Then something comes up where maybe years later you're approached and with a subsequent agreement. And that agreement is to develop your property in some fashion. Now it could be a well site agreement where the company wants to put a well on your property. It could be a pipeline right-of-way agreement. It could be a roadway. It could be a storage agreement. It could be a workspace agreement. It could be a meter site, surface site, surface use agreement. All of those things. But they're subsequent, generally, to the oil and gas lease that you signed sometimes many years in the past. Many, many people know that they were, uh, let's say it this way, they signed bad gas leases. And uh, look, it's okay. We have to, you know, we, we learn from that. It's okay if we learn from it. So when we learn from it and we say, okay, I signed a bad gas lease. I relied on those statements of the company landman. 
Now, more than ever, I know that the company Landman, I listen to that Doug Clark and all things Marcellus every week, and he reminds me every single week this same thing. So it must be important, must be important that I remember that the gas or pipeline company Landman works for the gas or pipeline company, not you. So I've learned that. I've learned that. So when the land man tells me how they're a landowner, how they're they're really pro landowner, I know that they work for the company, not for me. So if they're pro landowner, that's fine. But they have a job by their employer to represent their employer to the best of their ability, not to uh, do a bad job on the employer, um, not to get their employer a bad deal. They're not going to be around very long if they do that. No, their job is to get the best deal possible for their client or their employer, which would be the gas or pipeline company. You're listening to Attorney Doug Clark. This is All Things Marcellus. Join me on the station at this time each and every week. So, okay, now we know. We signed a lease that we said, boy, it could have been better. I kind of regret that. So now I have another agreement. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to touch the hot stove a second time and burn my hand. I'm going to say, hey, I learned a lesson. That first time I touched the hot stove, it burned my hand. I'm not going to touch it again because it burned my hand. The first time I relied on statements and thought that things were going to be a certain way, I signed the documents and it turned out not to be that way. Well, I've learned now. I'm not going to make that same mistake again. I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to call Doug Clark or somebody else who knows what they're doing. And I'm going to find out my rights. I'm going to find out where these documents are strong and weak. I'm going to negotiate for the highest amount of money that I can possibly obtain. And I'm going to negotiate for the best possible language, added terms, addendums, additional provisions, stipulations, added terms to my contract. I am going to negotiate for those. Now, a quick little side note. Just because your, nego your neighbor negotiated a pipeline agreement doesn't mean they did a good job. Doesn't mean they did a good job. I don't care how much they looked on the internet. I don't care. It doesn't mean they did a good job. So just simply relying on whatever your neighbor did or somebody else did, that's a bad decision in my book. Another thing, beware of the gas or pipeline company landman saying, well, this is what your neighbor signed for. This is what Mr. Smith, who has the 500 acre farm, large landowner, this is what he signed for. Oh, and this is what Mr. Jones signed for, and he had an attorney. Well, ladies and gentlemen, not all attorneys are created the same. And maybe Mr. Jones's attorney just wasn't very good. Maybe he or she didn't really know what they were doing. Maybe he or she didn't fight. Maybe he or she didn't understand how to assess their client's leverage and use that assessment to maximize the financial payment and the added terms to the agreement. So think of your company and you say, wow, we got Mr. Jones to sign this really bad agreement with hardly any landowner friendly terms and for low compensation. And Mr. Jones had a lawyer. So let's ring up all our landmen and say, hey, uh, here's what Mr. Jones signed. Go out in the community and tell all the people who you're trying to get a pipeline right away agreement, trying to sign them. Say, hey, here's what Mr. Jones signed. And Mr. Jones had a lawyer and he has a lot of property. So let's float and use this bad agreement to induce persuade others to sign the same bad agreement. When people say to me, when company representatives say to me that so-and-so signed for this, or this is what we're paying, or this is what this group signed for, 
my response is always this. I understand. Thank you for telling me that. But respectfully, that is irrelevant to me. What is relevant to me is my client in this situation. Just because somebody else signed a bad deal does not and will not mean that my client will also sign a bad deal. And you should be thinking the same way about your neighbor or anyone else in the community. Just because they signed a bad deal does not mean that you should too. We're just getting started. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can join me right here on this station every Sunday, 8 to 9 a.m. I will be back after this. And we're going to get into this. We're getting into the temporary workspace option agreement, promise, right after this unbelievably important message. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am here with you. Remember, every Sunday, join me 8 to 9 a.m. right here in this station. All right. Uh, Once again, without further ado, let's get into this. Temporary workspace option agreement happens to have been offered in Tioga County, but once again, we could throw this out anywhere in the state. And, And what we're looking at is how these techniques, just because this is a temporary workspace option agreement, how these techniques are used in many other agreements, many other agreements. So if you have a pipeline agreement, or if you're presented with one in the future, water line, surface line, surface site, roadway, any of these agreements, the same techniques and tricks, my opinion, tricks, are used in all types of agreements. This is just a great, great example. And I'm sitting here, (laughs) I have four four agreements that I'm dying to get to, but I can't get to them all in one show. And that's why I've been doing a show since 2010, since 2010, and we ain't stopping. We ain't stopping. No matter if they want us to or not, we're not stopping. We're gonna keep getting this information out there. So let's talk about this. Temporary workspace option agreement. Remember, option agreement. If you don't know what that means, I'm going to say it. I'll give you a quick example here. But remember, all prior radio shows for the last year or two are up on this uh, website. PAGasLeaseAttorney.com, PipelineAttorney.com. Go to the sites for information. Uh, Go to the sites if you need representation or not. Go to the sites and listen to prior radio shows. I've talked about option agreements exclusively in the past, but I'll touch on it here now. Option agreement. What that means is, generally speaking, you sign the document that's called the option agreement. Could be a pipeline right-of-way option agreement. Extremely common. Could be a temporary workspace option agreement like we're doing here. But most agreements presented by gas or pipeline companies in Pennsylvania are option agreements. What does that mean? Well, let me give you a little clue. Uh, Option means that at least one of the two parties to the agreement has an option. Now, everybody, little quiz, guess which party to these natural gas contracts has the option? Options tend to be good things. Options are usually good. You have options. I I preach to my kids all the time. Look, do well, do this, do that. Give yourself options and then take advantage of the options that you have and elect which option you want and then seize that option. Well, again, these are option contracts. So one party has an option. Well, I'm sure you could guess that you, as the landowner, do not have the option. The company has the option. The company has the option. Hey, guys, I wish we did, but the company has the uh, the option, and that's okay. We understand that. That's how this goes, but what do we want to do about that? Well, we want to try to limit the impact of this option. What does that mean? Well, 
how these agreements work, if you are typically paid a sum of money up front in exchange for the company having an option or a period of time to decide whether they want to continue with the agreement or what is called exercise their option. So you sign the contract, they give you some money, they have a period of time. If they decide to exercise the option, there would typically be a second payment, which is a larger payment usually, and that would be the exercise of option payment. So how do we make that better? I mean, what do we do to that? Well, you need to try to get as much money up front for the option that you can. What do I mean there? Well, if the company comes to you and says, well, we're going to give you $100 and we want to have a five-year option period in order to decide if we want to use this agreement and exercise the option. Well, hopefully you understood there. Hmm, there's a couple of problems. Number one is how much money are they giving you? $100? That's it? Well, let me tell you, I call it the landowner option dilemma. Remember, as I say, Companies aren't stupid. They are not stupid. So what do they do? They want to offer you the lowest possible option payment that they can, that they think you may accept, and then promise you the potential of a future payment, which may never come. It may come, but it may never, ever come in the future. So they say, oh, we'll give you $100, and then we want to have an option for five years. Well, we don't want $100. We want thousands of dollars. The other thing companies love to do, love to do, give you a small option and say, well, we're only going to give them a hundred bucks or 500 bucks for the option. They're not going to want to go to an attorney because they may end up paying that much money or more to the attorney. So let's give them a low option. They will feel that it doesn't make sense to go to an attorney because they may lose money and therefore... They will sign the agreement and never get the much needed legal assistance. Never learn what their rights are. Never learn what their leverage is. Never understand what can be negotiated and what can't be. So let's keep them away from attorneys who know what they're doing. How do we do that? One way, let's give them hardly any money and you know, pressure the heck out, well, almost <laughs> pressure the heck out of them, in my opinion, in times. So that's that's a very smart thing. Again, it's a smart thing. So what happens? What do we do? Landowner calls me, says, "Hey, I got this option agreement. They want to give me a hundred bucks, five hundred bucks." We say, "Look, some of these companies routinely, we can routinely negotiate options into the thousands of dollars to be paid up front. In which case." Even if those option agreements aren't ever exercised and you never get another payment, you don't lose money in the process. There's times where we say, look, we're not even going to address this option agreement for $100. Give us $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, whatever the number, different cases, different scenarios. We say, give us that, then we'll continue to talk. But I'm a big believer in not signing not specific advice. Generally speaking, I don't like to see people sign option agreements for 500 bucks, 600 bucks, 100 bucks. No, no, no. We need to get those number higher, those numbers higher because that you're granting them that right with the option. So you're giving them an option. They have the power and the right. You're burdening your property. There's a burden on it for however many years that option is out there until the company decides whether they're going to use it or not. So they're the company's buying quite a bit. And what are you getting? Not very much, in my opinion. Um, not very much. You're banking on, hopefully, a future agreement. So option agreements, the option must be negotiated, must be negotiated. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can join me right here on this station every Sunday, 8 to 9 a.m. So this is a good time just to stress, look, the radio show, not specific advice for anyone. Want to stress that, not specific advice for anyone, but my general belief is these options, the all agreements should be and must be negotiated, in my opinion. The option itself must be 
negotiated or attempted to be negotiated in all cases. And look, just because the company says no, it's real easy to say no. They say no and you say, oh, okay. And then you move on. Well, why the heck would they ever say yes then? So you have to understand how to negotiate. You have to understand that history. You have to understand what the company has done in the past. And we're always pushing from what we've done in the past in a positive way for the landowner. So, all right, got a little more into this option, but I want to finish it out. So the option itself. So let's pretend, and I don't like these numbers either, five or 600 bucks for the option. And let's say they want a five years to decide what they're going to do. Well, here's what we're going to do. No, we're not taking 500. We're not taking 600. We're not taking 100. We went into the thousands because we want to go to an attorney and we want to get the best agreement we can. That's pretty darn reasonable. And that's how I, in large part, make my living. And I have a lot of clients and have had a lot of clients. We've done a lot of great things for our clients. So this isn't something crazy. This is something that happens every day. So you say, okay, hey, land man, thanks for the documents. Uh, let me get a call and let me get a consultation with an attorney who knows what they're doing. And what are we going to do? We're going to talk about first what an option agreement is. We're going to talk about, hey, 100, 500, 600 bucks, that's not enough you should ask for such and such. Now, again, not specific advice. We got to look at everyone's circumstances. But then we go to step two. If they're giving you 500 bucks or 600 bucks and you're giving them a five-year option, that's crazy in my book, crazy. So we need to say we want, let's, I'm going to throw out numbers. Say so we'll, we'll give you an option, but we want the option to be paid at $2,000 up front and a two-year option. Well, let me say something. You know, here's a question that everybody has to ask themselves when they're presented with these agreements. And it just, it makes me nuts because here's what happens. The land man goes to your house. The land man says, oh, we're in a big hurry. We want to start work. We want to get you money. We want to get your royalties. <laughs> They've been saying that since the first lamb and I ever met in my entire life. That's what they've said. And as people know, years and years later, that they haven't seen what these guys said, hey, this is what we want to do. This is what we want to do. So we need to, again, we got to understand, we got to learn from this stuff. So the lamb man says, okay, we really want to get this thing gone. We want to break ground. We want to break ground, break ground in December, in February, in uh, August, whatever that time is. This is talk about breaking ground. Well, if you want to break ground in within the year, and sometimes it's within months, which is crazy, but if you want to break ground within a year, or if you want to break ground within two years, but let's just pretend because most of the time they're like, oh, we're in a hurry, we're in a hurry, we want to break ground. Well, if you want to break ground in a year, then why in the heck... Do you need a five-year option? No, nah, that's nuts. Why do you need five years if you're telling me you're in a big hurry? So use it against them. When they say to you, we want to do this, we want to do this, we want to do this, and they hand you a document for a five-year option or even a three-year option, or in any way they want to extend their option, well, don't tell me. Don't tell me that you want to start construction this year and hand me a five-year option agreement or a four or a three. And frankly, you could say even a two. But if you're going to start next year or the year after, why, company, would you need a longer option agreement? Also, many of the, well, some of these companies, they're out there acquiring these. And you see it with pipelines sometimes. They acquire these and then they want to go ahead and they want to sell them. Um, so just something else, a side note. But the point is, is, these option agreements, what is being said to you? Shocking. This is really shocking, guys. <laughs> what is said to you? What is being said to you? And what is being handed to you are virtually always different things. And sometimes it's frightening how different they are. So listen to the words and then look at the documents. Ask the land man who's so pro landowner. Ask them, how soon is construction going to start? Well, they plan to start construction in 2017. They plan to start construction in 2018. Well, great then. 
then you would only need a two-year option. Well, 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 well. Or my favorite, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to go back to uh, I'll have to go back to the company, my boss, this mysterious boss, management, uh, whoever that is. Um, but no, no, we can't, we can't do that. We can't do that. But if you're starting next year, why can't we do it? And then it's, oh, well, 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 and then you're going to find you're not going to have an answer. So to summarize this here, option agreements, any option agreement, and look, they are everywhere in oil and gas development in Pennsylvania. Option agreements are everywhere. And what we need to do is we need to negotiate to get more money up front. Don't let them trick you into not going and getting an attorney to review or consult with or to understand this because they're only offering you pennies up front. No, 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 no. We want to make sure that you negotiate to get more money up front and to reduce the time that the company has or their option period, reduce it, reduce it. So they can't hold this agreement over your head for the next five years or four years, or three years, reduce the option agreement and negotiate for more money up front in the option. Here we are, finishing up segment two. I haven't even got to the actual temporary workspace agreement, but good news, bad news. Good news is I'm going to get to it, and I'm going to get to all of it. The bad news is the reason why I'm able to do it, <laughs> it's like two paragraphs, and that's, that's not good. That's not good for you. Two paragraphs in this case, not good for you, the landowner. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, you join me every Sunday, 8 to 9, right here in the station. Also, go to pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. Today's show will be up and available tomorrow. Check it out. And also, check out many, many, many hours of radio shows available at pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. And look, your presented agreement, at least give us a buzz, uh, review and consultation, get some information, get educated, get informed. 570-307-0702. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, you can join me right here on this station every week at this time. Don't miss it. Remember, too, if you do. You can check out today's show is up on Monday morning on the websites at pagasleaseattorney.com, at pipelineattorney.com. I have been doing all things Marcellus each week since, since August of 2010. We're in our seventh year of this show. So we have some resources for you. Go check out pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. And go to the radio show segment and you can go or section and you can go and listen to prior radio shows. Go take advantage. Remember, each show is no show is specific advice for anyone. The specific advice I give is to get specific advice, but no show is specific advice. But there's a lot of really good um, information there. Of course, I am biased because I, I'm the one speaking it, but I do. I do believe it's good information. So I encourage you, pagasleaseattorney.com. PipelineAttorney.com, whether you're looking for representation, learn more about us, or if you just want to learn something, check it out. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Finally, the Temporary Workspace Option Agreement. I'm going to read from it verbatim. This agreement is made this blank day, not going to get into all that, between this person and the company. In this case, it happens to be Sweppy LP. So, Tioga County, guys. I know I say that a lot, but there's just there's a lot going on out there. So, okay. Witness F, that for and in consideration of the sum of $1, cash in hand paid to the grantor, which is landowner. So I'm going to say landowner instead of grantor, and I'm going to say company instead of grantee. So paid to the grantor by the company and in consideration is hereby acknowledged as full, complete, and sufficient consideration. So it's $1. Listen, let me tell you, you actually will have a separate um, document typically that will address compensation, but in this case, we, we'll hear below. So it goes on, says that the landowner, 
This is this is where you got to pay attention. Remember, this is short, so we don't have to have a long attention span here, at least not yet. So, okay, grantor, landowner, hereby conveys and grants unto the company its successors and assigns. Successors and assigns means you can sign this agreement with Sweppy LP or any other company, and the next day they can assign it, transfer it, sell it, sell it to a third party, another company, or they could assign it in part. So this is a workspace agreement. So they can start offering other companies the ability to use your property under this agreement. They can, they can. So you think this is going to happen. They say, oh, here's what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. Remember what I said earlier, what the land man says to you, what they are going to do, what they listen to this word, this should be the buzzword, intend, intend. Well, we intend, we intend, we intend, we intend. Not a good word for you as a landowner, a property owner, or oil and gas right owner. We intend. So what, the, what happens is it depends what's in the contract. Not what they intend, but what is in the contract. So in this case, Let's go on. So, landowner conveys and grants to the company's successors and assigns, which could be anybody, a temporary workspace at the locations described in the attached plat or map. Okay, locations described in the attached map. Map, I like that. We all, you have to have a map. You have to. And the map has to have a defined area. And we need to lock that map in, no rights outside of that map. So that's good, but you have to make sure that you're handling the map in the proper way and that you have a good map and you have limitation language. So this goes on. Said company is granted the right to use said temporary workspace for ingress and egress, meaning travel to and from. So company is granted the right to use said temporary workspace for ingress and egress to and from its oil and gas operations. What? <laughs> it's oil and gas operations. Well, where are they? Where are they? Are they across the state? Are they in your neighborhood? Are they on your road? Are they in your township? Are they in your county? Where are these operations? Well, you, I mean, yeah, I don't think you're going to know that. So it says, said grantee granted the right to use the temporary workspace for travel to and from, ingress and egress, to and from its oil and gas operations, which essentially is anywhere, anywhere. Imagine you could be down, and actually I have this case where a client in Pennsylvania, their property is being used to, for water to go to West Virginia. So they didn't think that was going to happen when they were signing the contract. I assure you of that. So, okay. Use this for work, uh, workspace ingress and egress to, from all from to and from. Excuse me, its oil and gas operations. Well, who can do it? Who's allowed to use this? By its employees, agents, and contractors. Now remember, they can assign this agreement as well. So whoever receives it, their employees, agents, and contractors, which includes drilling, service, well completion pipeline equipment. I'm going to read that one more time. So said company is granted the right to use said temporary workspace for ingress and egress to and from its oil and gas operations by its employees, agents, and contractors, which includes drilling service, well completion, pipeline equipment, drilling that deals with drilling wells, pipeline equipment, well, that deals with laying pipeline, okay? So you're now giving them the permission to use this property to travel to and from anywhere. They're, they have oil and gas operations and for all different purposes and anyone, you know, employees, agents, contractors. Now, that may be okay, but we've got to talk about this. Let's go on. The above said agreement crosses grantor's property which grantor landowner's property, which consists of approximately, and it states the number of acres this landowner owns 
in which township and county, and then it goes on to describe it by the deed book and page number. So that's the first paragraph. That's the longest paragraph. So to summarize, this says that the first part says for a dollar consideration. We're going to talk about that in a second. But you're granting, bottom line, all of that we've talked about so far, here's what it said, that you grant the company its successors or assigns and assigns a temporary workspace at locations described in the attached map and that the company is granted the right to use that workspace for ingress and egress to and from its oil and gas operations, there's no limitations there, by the company's employees, agents, and contractors, which includes, not limited to, but includes drilling operations, service operations, well completion operations, and pipeline equipment. Then it just describes the property. <laughs> so that's pretty broad. That is pretty darn broad, and we need to address that. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, join me each week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. So, okay, next paragraph. <laughs> In the event that the company does not exercise this option by tendering a check to the landowner for the temporary workspace within one year from the date hereof, hip, hip, hooray, that is actually good. One year option, good. Generally, pretty darn reasonable. So, makes it more attractive. Now, we haven't, again, talked about it, what money you're getting up front or anything else, so you better darn well be getting money up front. But it says that, again, repeating, company does, if the, in the event the company does not exercise the option by giving you a check for the temporary workspace that they're going to use, within one year from the date of the agreement, then this agreement becomes null and void. So, okay, they have one year to decide, like I said the last segment, one year to decide, and if they're going to use it, they have to send or give you a check. Now, this agreement does not in any way address how much money they paid you in order to have a one-year option to decide whether to do this, but it does put an option deadline of one year. That, in my opinion, is reasonable. That's reasonable. Now, we would have need to, needed to address how much money you're getting up front as just part of the option, yet alone the language. Okay, so next sentence says, in the event a company elects to exercise the temporary workspace under the terms of this agreement, the company agrees to pay, uh, listen up, please, company agrees to pay landowner $800 an acre for temporary workspace. $800 an acre for temporary workspace. Then, then the next paragraph in the last paragraph says, the covenants and obligations of this agreement shall be binding upon the heirs, executors, administrators, successors, and assigns of the parties, and the rights and easements herein granted may be, may be, may be leased or assigned together or separately and in whole or in part, and in whole or in part. Then there's the signature lines. Oh, gosh. <laughs> there are so many. That's it. Then you sign it. That's it. Then you sign it. I'm going to I'm going to have fun this last segment. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. One more segment to go. You can join me every week at this time. Don't don't it's not like this. Don't t change the dial because I'm telling you now as I read this again, I got fired up again. This agreement is a disgrace in my opinion. A disgrace and I feel bad if anyone's out there to sign it. It's a terrible agreement in my opinion. I'm going to explain why. I will explain why. And I'm going to tell you this. Nobody can tell me any different, and I'll debate anybody at any time that this agreement has problems. And they're indefensible. Indefensible. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, you can join me on this station at this time each and every week. And check out today's show tomorrow 
on PA Gas Lease Attorney.com or Pipeline Attorney.com. Many other shows dating back a few years at this point. And I've been doing the show since 2010. Okay, let me just tell you, I'm going to have some fun. But I want to stress we're going to have fun on the radio show with this, at least hopefully. Um, but there's really, it's, there's nothing funny about, about this, but for our purposes to, uh, to liven up this morning, let's have a little fun. This agreement, in my opinion, is absolutely atrocious, atrocious, and it is handed out to Pennsylvania landowners. This particular one, in my opinion, again, being atrocious, handed out in Tioga County. Well, why, Doug Clark, do you say this is atrocious? Why do you say that no company person could ever effectively debate you uh, in your position or challenge your position? Well, here is why. No one can defend this agreement, in my opinion. I read it the last segment. Okay. Here's some things that you don't have. Remember, you are giving them temporary workspace identified on a map that would be attached to the agreement. You're giving them that workspace for ingress and egress to and from oil and gas operation, operations, excuse me, not on your property, not your neighbor property, anywhere, anytime. You're giving it to the company, their employees, their agents, all of those different things, all of those different things. And then the company can assign it in whole or in part, meaning they can use it. They can give it to their friends from the pipeline company. They can give it to any anyone they choose. All of those things are in this. Now, what isn't in this? Remember, they are offering to pay. We're not offering. This contract is grantor, grantee, landowner, company agree to a payment, a flat payment of $800 per acre, per acre used. Now, remember, this was a one-year option, and we don't even know. It's totally silent on whether the landowner was giving any money, given any money to sign. We don't know that. But we know they're giving this this two-page piece of garbage, in my opinion. And why is it garbage? Again, so $800 an acre. Now, there is no time frame in this agreement. They have one year to pay you $800 per acre that they're going to use. And then when does this end? When does it end? Well, here's the answer to that. Who the heck knows? Because there is nothing in this agreement that provides for how or when this agreement will end. There is not a darned thing. This agreement could go for 100 years. There is nothing. It says temporary workspace, but there is no limitation in this agreement whatsoever. This could literally go 100 years. And what do you get? You get $800 as a one time, one time only. One time only, not $800 a year, not $800 a month, which I've actually have had clients receive before for workspace, $800 a month. I have had client a client that I can recall specifically signing for. $800 a month that had limitations as to how long the agreement could be used for. This, this, this is no joke. <laughs> this agreement literally has no date of ending. And you're paid $800 per acre that's being used. So let's, let's play that out for a second. Now I'm going to, I am getting fired up because this, this just, it gets me so upset and people, I just, I feel bad because I know people sign these agreements and we got to what? Stop signing bad agreements. It's embarrassing that a company would present these types of agreements to people. Why? Well, I haven't even got to the ultimate kicker. Well, I don't even know which one's the ultimate kicker because there's kickers all over this thing. So $800 per acre. Let's play this out. Say they're taking five acres of your property, five acres. That's a big hunk of property. Five acres. What do you get? Five acres times $800 an acre. You get $4,000. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they don't walk out there and hand you an envelope of cash. No, nor should they. But no, what do they do? They send you a check, you get a 1099, and you pay taxes. 
So you're paying taxes on $4,000. You're not getting $4,000. You're going to pay taxes and you'll net money after taxes. Well, what if this is there for the next 50 years? <laughs> you just got three or you got $4,000 minus taxes and the company is using five acres of your property, five acres of your property for the next 50 years. Well, let's say it's not 50. Let's say it's 100. But no, let's say it's five years. Let's say it's 10 years. Let's say it's three years. All of which, in my opinion, are crazy. And I would never, me, myself, would never sign ever, ever, ever an agreement like this. It's a, Again, it's a disgrace that this is presented. There's no ending to this agreement. No ending. But we put temporary up top. So it gives you the idea that it's not going to be forever, but there's nothing in this agreement. These two paragraphs that actually, and really, there is, there's, a, <laughs> there's three sentences of substance in this agreement. So what is, what's the company landman going to tell you? Well, we intend what we're going to do, what we intend on doing. Well, what this contract says is, hey, whatever area that they're saying on this map, they have it as long as they want it for a one-time payment of $800 per acre. There is nothing about how are they going to reclaim this? Is there going to be a roadway? Is there going to be a gate, a fence? Is there going to be anything? What is going to be on this property? You know, It's very unknown even what it is going to be used for. There are so many problems with this. And those aren't, these aren't little problems. These are mammoth enormous, dare I say, huge problems. They are huge problems. How about this one, guys? Who, and I know my grandfather, and I know my father, and I know my great uncle, and my uncle Homer who had his barn, and my grandfather Laird with his barn, and every other guy on a dime road on an airport road where I grew up in Parks Township, Armstrong County, would never ever expose themselves to liability that they didn't need to. They don't want to be sued, nor should you, nor should you expose yourself to be sued. So again, they offer to pay you $800 per acre, five acres, $4,000 into your pocket. Nope, nope, nope. You got to pay taxes on us. You're not getting $4,000 in your pocket. Now you have an agreement. You have an agreement for use of five acres, potentially forever, not just by this company, but by their assignments, whoever they assign it to, which they can do in pieces, or they can do the whole thing. So you can have everybody, anybody in the world on that property. So you say, what happens if somebody gets hurt? What about liability protection? There is none. You have absolutely zero liability protection. So for the next 50 years, 10 years, five years, 100 years, somebody gets hurt, somebody gets in trouble, something happens out there, you will be sued and you'll have to defend it. You don't have protection there. And what did you get? Three grand after taxes, maybe, maybe four grand. That's what you got. You got a big ball of mess and you didn't get hardly any money. We gotta stop signing bad agreements. We got to, we have to stop signing bad agreements. You in this agreement are given zero, zero liability protection, zero liability protection. Child goes onto the property in this area, gets hurt. You get sued. You have a problem. Even if you did nothing wrong, you're sued. You have a problem. You can't, in my opinion, sign an agreement that does not completely and totally protect you for liability and under any circumstances. But sure, heck, you can't do it when you're getting paid four grand for an undefined agreement that can last forever. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark, Clark Law Firm. Stop signing bad agreements. Stop signing bad agreements. Remember, gas pipeline company, look, work, work, work for the gas and pipeline company, not you, the landowner. Sorry I ran that fast, but I'm over. Have a great, great week, everyone. See you next week.